Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Everybody ought to praise the Lord. Before I go into the word that God has gave me for you, <clears throat> as well as for myself, we're going to go to a prayer of faith. Let's begin to pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, we, as we come before you, Lord, in your awesome and holy presence, Lord, forgive us for our sins, wash of our sins away. Thank you for dying on the cross of Calvary, O oh God, for shedding your blood for us, that we may have life, have eternal life. Not just only life, but we may have eternal life to be with you, to be with Jesus Christ. Thank you for dying on the cross and rising from the dead the third day morning. Thank you, Lord, for saving souls. Thank you for saving my soul and saving the people's souls and help us to stay stay saved not just only get saved but stay saved when the bible says stand fast therefore in the liberty apostle paul told the church in galatians chapter 5 verse 1 stand fast therefore in the liberty where christ had made you free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage so we thank god for saving us and giving us power to stay saved praise god the power is the power of the holy ghost that's why Jesus said, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. The Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. Um, they received it on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter number two. The Holy Ghost is the keeping power. They help us stay saved. Sa saved from what? Saved from hell. They help us not to live in sin when we abide in his words and let his words abide in us. And God will help us to obey his holy commandments. Because Jesus said, if you love me, Praise God for the Prince of Peace. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Ain't that right, y'all? All right, I want to go into a word of an encouraging word. It's such a peaceful atmosphere. Yesterday, my message was, may the peace of God be with you. Not like having a peace of mind. Praise God. When Jesus come on the inside, he give you peace. He give you joy. Uh, most of all, he gives you love. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit. That's, actually, that's the first fruit of the spirit is love you get a chance to y'all read the book of galatians chapter 5 verse 22 it talks about the fruits of the spirit love joy peace see that peace before i go any further i want to go into the scriptures where it talks about the fruits of the spirit it say love joy peace let's go into this galatians chapter 5 verse 22 i love the word of god look what it says Went to another scripture. Book. No, I didn't say Ephesians. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. I love this. Look what it says. We're, we're going to take our time, okay? Turn with me. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. I just said that. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit is peace. I preached that yesterday. May, may the peace of God be upon you and in you. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, God makes you gentle, and self-control against such things, there is no law. See, he gives you love. That's the first fruit of the Spirit is love. Jesus said, love one another as Christ said, love you. Jesus said, by this, all men will know you're my disciples if you have love one for another. Then he goes on to joy. He wants you to have joy. Any church you go to that don't have no joy, they don't have the fruits of the spirit. When you have Jesus, he gives you joy. And I'm not talking about drugs or crack or alcohol. I'm talking about the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. That's one of the fruits of the spirit is joy. It makes you jolly. You're happy. Even when you're going through storms, you still got your joy because you believe in Jesus. And Jesus said, you, he said, let not your heart be troubled. St. John chapter 14, verse one, he said, believe in God. He said, believe also in me. See, in my father's house, as a hope we have, there are many mansions. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I come again, I will receive you unto myself. That where I am, there he may be also. So when you have that joy, that means you have confidence. You have faith in what Jesus has said. You have a hope. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. It's for you. It's for me, those who live godly in Christ. I know though, I know the Bible said, they that live God in Christ, I suffer persecution, yes. But the Bible also said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, hallelujah, but the Lord will deliver them out of them all. So that's one of the fruits of the Spirit is joy, peace, temperance, being humble. Oh, praise God for the Prince of Peace. 
So when you have the fruits of the spirit, the fruits of the spirit deals with your character. So now you have the character of Jesus. That's why Jesus said, let your light so shine. The others may see your good works that the father may be glorified through his son, Jesus. Now we know the Bible did say in Ephesians chapter two, verse eight, that we are saved by grace and through faith. Go to verse nine too. It says, not in works that we are saved, lest any man is supposed. Okay, now we're talking about people who do not have Jesus, who are not saved. Because there are people who don't believe in Jesus and still doing good works. Doing good works is great. The Freemasons do good works, but yet they still worship in Balfamet. <laughs> Even the Eastern Stars, so the woman version of the Masons. Many of you are still worshiping Balfamet, who is a demon who looks like a goat. So many of you think that doing good works is going to put you into heaven. But yet, you don't believe in Jesus, yet you're still worshiping Lucifer on the side, you're still doing witchcraft and devil worship, and you, the devil tricked you to make you think because you're doing good works that that's all it takes to get to heaven. But no, that's not so. If you read the book of Matthew, chapter number 7, verse 22, Jesus specifically said, many in that day would say, Lord, Lord, have we not cast out devils in thy name? Have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not done many wonderful works in thy name? And then Jesus will profess unto them, I never knew you. That's deep. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, even though they did wonderful works. Uh, Al Capone in Chicago, back in the 1920s, believe it or not, he did wonderful works. I mean, he had a food pantry. He fed the homeless people, but yet he never repented. Hear me closely. He never repented from being the head of a mafia. He never repented, even though he did good works on the side. So it takes more than just doing wonderful works. See, when Jesus said, let your light so shine, that others may see your good works. It is that the Father may be glorified through his Son, Jesus. See, now, in order for the Father, God, to be glorified, then you must obey the Father, being obedient to his commandments. That's why Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Here you go. Let your light so shine that others may see your good works. It's in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. These are the words of Jesus. I love this. Praise the Lord. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Now that was not referring to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 when it says uh, that we're saved by grace and through faith. It's not a works that we're saved lest any man should boast. He was not talking about that scripture. I'm explaining what he meant by this. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify you no, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. In order for the God to be glorified, he must be glorified through your life. When you live a holy life, when you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, when you're keeping his commandments, Jesus called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So after you're saved by grace and through faith, now when you do good works, now he's being glorified because you're not doing good works uh, on your own. You're not worshiping Balfour You're not worshiping the devil. You got a lot of Hollywood. You got many Hollywood stars who do good works, but yet they're doing satanic rituals. So it takes more than just doing good works. Yes, the Masons, they help the uh, children who have cancer, and the Strinus, but yet they still worshiping Lucifer. But when you're worshiping God, when you're serving God with a full heart, with a loving heart, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, according to Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four, he said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. He didn't say some, all. With all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. No, we're not perfect, but you're trying your best to be like Jesus and to, and to obey his word. So once you're obedient, now he can be glorified through your good works. Because you're not just only doing good works, but you're living a holy life after you do good works. You understand? So that's what Jesus meant by let your light so shine before men. Okay? that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So now Jesus is not going to say to you, I never knew you. He knows you. Your sheep will be on the right hand and not along with the goats will be on the left hand. Now Jesus can be glorified because you're bearing the fruits of the Spirit. See, according to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, now your good works that you're doing will please God. It's not just only just doing good works in the community, but now your life is pleasing God after you do good works. 
You're praising God, you're serving God in your house. You're not serving Ouija boards and OG boards and voodoo dolls and statues and idols. Because the Bible said idolaters will not inherit the kingdom of God according to 1 Corinthians chapter number 6 verse 9 and read the verse 10. Praise God, but you're serving God. I've, I've, I've seen many pastors and churches growing up who can preach the word. And yes, they know the word, but they still got King Tuck statues in their office. They got idols in their office. Now, King Tuck, what do King Tuck have to do with the King of Kings? You ain't never heard the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, lifting up King Tuck. Mm -mm. Jesus said, I am the way. He didn't say King Tuck. He didn't say Balfamet. Jesus said, I am the way. St. John chapter 14, verse 6, the truth and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. Not, not by King Tuck. It's about, it's about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the greatest of them all. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Didn't say King Tuck. At the name of Jesus, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God in heaven, here on earth and underneath the earth. According to Philippians chapter number 2, verse 10 and verse number 11. So I met a lot of preachers. Praise God. I met a lot of preachers in the churches who are preaching the word, and yet they're serving King Tuck on the side. Mm -mm, you can't serve Jesus Christ and King Tuck. King Tuck was worshiping false gods. <laughs> and God told Israel, thou shalt not have no other God before me. Thou shalt not worship any graven images. Mm -mm. That's like worshiping some Barbie doll. What are you worshiping King Tuck for? King Tuck can't do nothing for you. Uh -uh. Jesus is Lord. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he's the greatest of them all. So once you worship God, he'll bless you. Once you obey his commandments, he'll bless you and your family. He'll bless you and your children. Because now you're having church in your house. Oh, praise God. It's best to have church in your house. A family who prays together will stay together. Now Jesus is the head of your house. Oh, when you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. So I just wanted to clarify that. Praise God. Uh, my message today is I want to talk about promotion. This is what David said. I love this scripture. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Y'all know who David was. God used him to slay Goliath. David was a young child who God used to slay Goliath. As I minister here on YouTube. Let's go to the scriptures right now. I love the word of God. Promotion do not come from east, west, south, or north, but it comes from above. It comes from God. Let's go into that. The scripture said, look what it said. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. We'll take our time, okay? Songs chapter 75, verse 6 to verse 7. This is what David said. And David knew because David was being uh, targeted by King Saul because, you know, King Saul disobeyed God. King Saul was the first king of Israel. Uh, they begged Samuel to choose a king for them because before they had kings, they had uh, judges. Like uh, the prophet Deborah was a judge of Israel. Samson was a judge of Israel. The prophet Samuel was a judge of Israel. He was the one who anointed David to be king. But before he anointed David to be king in the house of Jesse, praise God, and David was the least of his brethren. Um, he anointed Saul. But we know the story of Saul disobeyed God. He was rebellious against God, and uh, um, I don't have I don't have time to go through the whole story. But he was disobedient. He was stubborn. He was rebellious. Rebellious. And the prophet Samuel said that uh, stubbornness and rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. So the spirit of the Lord left Saul and chose David. Saul got jealous of David, especially after he saw, seen how God used David to slay Goliath. He wasn't jealous at first, but when he saw the favor that God had gave David with man, uh, the women sang about David and the women sang about Saul. They said, Saul killed a thousand, but David killed 10,000. Oh, that made Saul mad. So he had a sense that this was the one who will one day take his place to be king. So as you read the Bible, the Bible says that Saul put a hit on David. He tried to stop his destiny. He was envious of David. How many times you had pastors or people in your family who were jealous of you who were trying to stop your destiny? But what God has for you is for you. The devil cannot stop what God has for you. When God says, I'm going to bless you, he's going to bless you. I don't care what a witch and warlock try to put a curse on you. Ain't no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. That curse will backfire against your enemy. 
Ah, the devil been trying to stop somebody's destiny. But what God has for you is for you. David was going through this for a long time. Okay. But David became king anyway. He didn't have to. He didn't have to put himself up. He didn't promote himself up. Even David, there was times David had a chance to even kill Saul, but he did not do it. He still gave Saul respect, even though Saul was jealous of him, but he never tried to take over his kingdom. He was still humble. The Bible said David, here it is now, the Bible said David behaved himself wisely. That's deep. In other words, he was humble. You didn't see David trying to take over Saul's kingdom. He played the harp. He was a musician. And the evil spirit that was sent by God to torment Saul because of his disobedience. When David played the harp, there was so much anointing in his music that the evil spirit left and Saul was at peace. So there was an anointing in his music. David was humble. That's what the Bible meant by he behaved himself wisely. You never saw David trying to take over his kingdom. You ain't never heard David say, oh, I'm going to be the future king of Israel. He didn't he, notice he never even told Saul that. He was always humble. He didn't try to take over. He wasn't competitive. He wasn't jealous. He was humble. See, Jesus said, and the meek shall in the hair of the earth. So look what David said. And David became king anyway because God was the one who raised David up. Look what the Bible said. Songs chapter 75, verse 5 to verse 8. I love this. Look what he says. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Jesus. He said, for promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south, but God is the judge. Hallelujah. He put us down one and set us up another. That remind me what Jesus said. He said, I'll make the first to last, and the last shall be first. It remind me also what it says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 14. God told Israel, if you obey my holy word, if you'll keep my holy commandments, he said, I will make you the head and not the tail. He said, I will bless you only if you keep my holy word, only if you live holy, only if you obey me. Because in verse 15, it also talks about the cursing plan. If you do not obey God's word, you'll be cursed. So God has rules. When you say you love him, you don't have an attitude you don't mind keeping his commandments. So as we read, that promotion comes from God. Promotion comes from above. David knew because it was God who made David king. It was God who promoted David. It was not man. Because when God promotes you, man cannot take you down. Because when God bless you, the devil cannot curse you because you're blessed by God. God bless you, young man. I see greatness in you. God continue to bless you and your family. Praise the Lord with the power of the Holy Ghost. Don't have to take no jug overdose. All we need is the Holy Ghost. See, when you obey God's Holy Word and do it God's way, and you're humble, God will promote you. He will bless you. He'll raise you above your enemy. Oh, I feel the anointing of God right now. Thank you, Jesus. And God is so great. I want to go into God's Word, what it says, how God will give you favor. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Check this out, y'all, in YouTube land. Oh, and by the way, uh, the marriage that we prayed for yesterday on the telephone, we heard me praying about the marriage, where God rest restored the young man's marriage the same day after we prayed. I was praying here on YouTube yesterday, and I called a young man, him and his wife separated, and they was going through a marriage problem, and we prayed all around the world, our prayer warriors. Well, I got the call the same day, him and his wife got back together the same day that we prayed. God worked a miracle. Woo! Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. To God be the glory. Jesus is still in the miracle working business. Young woman got healed here on yesterday. Her legs was paralyzed. She was in pain. After we prayed yesterday, God healed her. She was shouting up a storm. We got it on YouTube. Let's go to the YouTube that I made on yesterday. It's called May the Peace of God Be With You. Street Pastor Preacher Warren. So I got the call that him and his wife is back together after they've been separated for a long time. So I just wanted to put that out to y'all. Y'all, we prayed and the prayers of the righteous avail as much. To God be the glory. We're praying for all of you out there who's having marriage and problems. So can I look what the Bible declares? I love this scripture. It said, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Oh, I like that. Can I read it again, y'all? Y'all heard that? Digest that, y'all. I want you to digest this. This is good. This is good stuff right here. It said the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's a quote from Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22 in the Bible. The full verse reads, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. That means that God can use the wicked to bless you. God will give you a favor in a wicked world. <laughs> That's only for those who walk upright before God. That's only those for those who obey God. Ah, I feel the Holy Ghost don't got to take no drug overdose. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. The Bible said that the angels of the Lord encamp about those who fear the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 7. Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon said that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, which means to reverence God, which means to love God, which means to respect God, where you obey his holy word. I know you'll go through trials and tribulation, but God will hold you by your hand. Mm -hmm, Jesus, and for Jesus, you will stand. Yeah, Lord, thank you, Jesus. He will bless you even in this wicked world. I know that people are rejecting God, but he will raise you above your enemy. God said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. He said, I'll make you above only and not beneath. He said, I'll make the first the last. Whoa, and the last shall be first. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Before I go into preaching, I want to do a little more teaching. I want to clarify some things to my friends back in Refuge Temple years ago. I hadn't been in Refuge Temple in years. Grew up in Refuge Temple on the, the late Bishop William and Bonner. And there's some people who were talking about uh, Preacher Warren one day is going to be the pastor of Refuge Temple. And no, I'm not the pastor of Refuge Temple. God did not tell me I'm going to be the pastor of Refuge Temple. I wanted to clarify that. I just wanted to put that out there to those who watch me from Refuge Temple. Uh, Bishop Bonner was the pastor of the church. First he was Bishop Lawson. The mantle fell on Bishop Bonner. And then it went to Bishop Wright, who's doing such a great job. And then it's going to go to Ella Jr., uh, Bishop Jr. Wilkins. I will not be the pastor of Refuge Temple. I got my own ministry. It's called the Flame of Fire Miracle Church Ministry. Well, praise God. I don't, believe, I don't believe in taking over someone's church. I don't believe in trying to take over somebody's house. I'm not like that. So I want to clarify that for those of you out there talking about taking over somebody's church. And, well, I'm going to take over his seat. See, that's pride. See, God don't work with pride. The Bible said God resists the proud and give us grace unto the humble. When you got this, you know, I heard of one young man a long time ago say, oh, I'm going to take over that church. Already he has a prideful spirit. He didn't labor, didn't win those souls in that church. He may have a nice suit in the clergy. And the clergy, that don't mean that you're a pastor because you're wearing the clergy. There's a lot of men wearing clergies. It doesn't mean he's a man of God. Man of God simply means a man who loves God. Woman of God simply means a woman who loves God. And when you love God, then you will obey God. Praise God for Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, my sister. Hey, thank you so much, woman of God. God is with you. Hallelujah. Thank God for the woman of God. Thank you, Jesus. She said, let the Lord use you. That's a woman of God right there. She felt the word of God. That's what man of God means and woman of God means. You don't have to have a title to be a preacher, to be a man of God. Come on, y'all already know there's a lot of pastors who have a title of a pastor, but he's not a man of God. And there's those who are men of God. Look how God was angry at the pastors of the church when he spoke through Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 1, he said, Woe be unto the pastors who scatter my flock. He said, Woe be to the pastors who scatter my sheep. Well, God was angry at the pastors because they was doing God's people wrong. Some of you are under the wrong pastors who are jealous, envious, I'm going to be playboys doing witchcraft, but that's not a man of God. So there's a lot of people who got titles of missionaries and elders and bishops. It doesn't mean he's a man of God because he's, if he was a man of God, check this out, y'all, he would bear fruits. Oh, that's, see how God connected that? That's going back to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The fruits of the spirit. It deals with your character. You have the character of Jesus, love, joy, peace. Self-control, temperance, humility, you're humble. See, that's the character of Jesus. You bear fruits. See, a man, a man of God is simply somebody, someone who loves God. You don't got to be a bishop to be a man of God. You don't have to be a, 
a, have a title of a missionary to be a woman of God. You don't have to have a title of evangelist to be a man of God. It's just doing what God say and loving God is what makes you a woman and a man of God. You are a child of God. When you love Jesus, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. See, when you're humble, you don't go around trying to take over somebody's house. That's their house. See, when you're humble before God, you don't have the mentality where well, I'm going to take over his church and I'm, I'm going to take over their house. No, that's pride. That's arrogance. So when you have Jesus in your life, you are humble. See, what God has for you is for you. You don't got to try to fight for it. God will just raise you up. That's what David said. Promotion comes from above. You don't got to go out and try to, well, that's that. I'm going to take over his church. No. You go out there and win the souls. Go in the hedges, in the hedges, in the vineyard and compel souls to come to Jesus. You evangelize in the nursing homes, on the shelters, on the streets. You go where the Lord sing you at and have the right motive to preach. This is not a contest. This is not a popularity contest. This is not about who's the best preacher. This is not about who's the best pastor or who got the best church. See, that's what's wrong with a lot of churches. People are competing with each other who's the best pastor or who's the best preacher. It's not about who's the best. God is the best, and he stands out, out, out of all the rest, and he gets the glory. That's why we said to God be all the glory. Not some glory, to God be all the glory. God said in the book of Isaiah, ha, I feel the anointing right now, the Holy Ghost. Chapter 42, verse number 8. Mm, I am the Lord, and the Lord is my name, and my glory I will not give to another. All the glory goes to God. There are a lot of ministers who want to only be in the pulpit so they can get glory. They want to be seen of men, like the scribes and Pharisees. They was only doing things to be seen of men. Read the book of Matthew, chapter number 6. Jesus was rebuking the scribes and Pharisees. So they only want to do things to be seen of men. He called them vipers. He rebuked the scribes and Pharisees in the book of Matthew, chapter number 23. He called them hypocrites. Don't be like the scribes and Pharisees. Give God all the glory. Stay humble. Stay humble. That's why Jesus said, and the meek shall inherit the earth. And what God has for you, let him promote you. <laughs> let him raise you up. You just keep on doing God's will. Not have that mentality, well, I'm going to take over this church. I'm gonna see, that's a see, that's pride. This is what stirs up confusion. This is what stirs up animosity and jealousy and competition. So now God's people are gossiping on each other backbiting each other in the church. They're doing witchcraft against each other in the church. This one, they're trying to take another man's wife. And this one's trying to take another woman's husband. All this negative dramatics going on in the church. And now you wonder why people don't want to come to church because people are not stupid. They can see the phoniness that's going on in church. They can see the hypocrisy that's going on in church. Now, not every church is like that. We're not perfect. We know that. Even in God's church, uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. So there's no perfect church because we're not perfect. We're still striving so I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that the enemy has tricked God's people to fight against each other instead of fighting against the real enemy who is the devil by using God's word against demonic spirits. Oh, come on, come on. Because you're trying to promote yourself above someone else. You're fighting to get positions and power and title. To you, it's not about souls. See, this is about souls. So when you love God, you love God's people. I'm not in this thing to win a popularity contest. I'm in this thing for souls. I'm not in this thing to try to take advantage of another man's wife like a lot of these playboy pastors do. When a, when a woman come to him with a marriage problem, instead of him trying to help her to Jesus, the pastor is trying to get the married man into the bed, and that's the wrong pastor. We got too many pastors who are seducing other, women's, uh, other men's wives in the church. That's the wrong kind of pastor. That's a, a pet pastor. He has a lusting spirit. So when you are a pastor, you have respect for God. And when you have respect for God, then you have respect for God's people. You don't take advantage of God's people. You have to have a certain character and a mannerism and a love for God's people and pray, not trying to control people's marriages. You, you try to help them get back together. Now, some marriages has not been ordained by God. You got to know how to counsel people in love. You must not have no favoritism. You must be a fair man. Praise God. Not have favoritisms. You must tell the truth in love because the Bible said, "Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. According to St. John chapter 8, verse 32, it's a lot with being a man and woman of God. You have to have the character of Jesus. 
You must have developed the character of Jesus. And once you have the character of Jesus, now you are bearing the fruits of Jesus. You're bearing the fruits of the spirit, the fruits of righteousness, according to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The first fruit of the spirit is love. Jesus said by this, all men will know you're my disciples if you have love one for another. That's why he said, love thy neighbor as thyself. How can you love your neighbor if you don't first love yourself? If you are suicidal, you obviously don't love yourself. If you have a low self-esteem of yourself and want to pop drugs and, and marijuana and crack, man, you obviously don't love yourself because you've been wounded. You've been hurt. You've been brokenhearted. That's why Jesus said, I come to heal your broken heart so you won't kill yourself. You don't got to take no drug overdose. All you need is a Holy Ghost. Whoa, I felt that right there. I'm going to say it again for somebody. You don't need no drug overdose. All you need is a Holy Ghost. Whoa, hallelujah. Mm, Jesus. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. Power to live right. So I just wanted to clarify that. I'm not trying to take over nobody. That's not my church. I already got my own ministry. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. To win souls for Jesus Christ. You sent me here to New Jersey. I'm not one to try to take over nobody's church. I'm not one to go around trying to take over someone's house. No, we stay humble. It's all about God's house. It's all about obeying Jesus. It's all about what he wants. So that's why when David wrote that, that promotion comes from God. Praise God. And when God promotes you, man cannot take you down when god give you a position they cannot take that position away from you because god puts you there and what god has for you is for you folk been trying to break up your marriages and, but see the bible said who the lord joined together let no man put asunder when you work against a god ordained marriages honey you working against the holy spirit you think trying to work witchcraft against someone's marriage and going down the witch doctors trying to break up the marriage if god said they belong together stop messing with a god ordained marriage our God will give you. Come on. What God has for you is for you. Let's go back to that scripture again. Promotion do not come from uh, east, west, south, and north. It comes from above. Oh, uh, praise the Lord. That's what he said in Psalms chapter 75. I love this scripture. I want to read it again. It said, for promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. Hallelujah. For it comes neither from the east, west, south, or north, but it comes from God. It comes from above. Thank you, Jesus. It comes from God. Let the Lord raise you up. Let the Lord promote you. As you obey God, he'll bless you. As you obey God, he'll raise you up. As you obey his holy word, he'll break generational curse. Not just only break generational curse. God will destroy generational curses because of the anointing destroys the yoke. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He says, not by might. It's not by power. Whoa, thank you, Jesus. But it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Whoa, Lord, thank you, Jesus. But just stay humble before the Lord and live a holy life. Live, live a clean life before the Lord. But the Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. You don't got to have a mentality trying to take over somebody's church. Stay humble. A lot of times when I go to somebody's church, I sit right in the audience. To hear the word being preached to me, you got to stay humble. One time I was invited to a church and they said, Preacher Warren, come to the pulpit. They said, Preacher Warren is here. And after the man of God finished preaching the word, they asked me to say words. It was a packed church too. Everybody said, Preacher Warren, preach. The youth was like, Preacher Warren is here. Preach. And you know what I did? I said, first giving honor to God. He gets the glory first. Then I said, giving honor to the angel of the church, who's the pastor of the church, because pastors are also call angels. We're not talking about God's holy angels in heaven. And giving honor to the pastor's wife and all of you who are here. I said, I praise God that you have me here. I said, let's thank God for the man of God, who's the guest preacher who brought forth the word of God. Let's give him a great big hand. I begin to encourage the man of God. So I'm not going to preach after the man gets finished preaching. I said, the word has already went forth. Why well, I need to be preaching, re preach a message after the man of God has finished preaching the word. I'm not gonna call a long prayer line and go laying hands on people and prophesying on folk after the man of God has finished praying for people. No, you stay humble. They kept saying, but preach your wine, preach. I said, no, it's not my time to preach. My time is to encourage and to exalt. That's how you stay humble. When it's my time to preach, then it's my time to preach. He opened up the door. Praise God. 
And he said, behold, I set before you an open door that no man can shut, that no man can close. It's about being humble and let the Lord promote you. Let the Lord get the glory out of your life so he can be glorified, so God can get all the glory. To God be the glory. I didn't say to God be some glory. I said to God be all the glory. Once we give God the glory, then that's when God will bless. When you stay humble before God and don't give yourself glory, but you're giving God all the glory, then that's when God will bless. Then that's when he'll provide. When you got no food in the refrigerator, God is better than a smooth operator. He will provide. But faith without works is dead. So we cannot expect God to do everything for us. We have to put some works behind it. Now when God sees you are trying, then God will promote you. Then God will bless you. Some of you are going through stuff on your job with your supervisor. Your co-workers are coming against you. But God said, don't worry. God said, don't worry. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you soon. Lord, Lord, protect them, Lord, everywhere they go. Bless their whole life. You love them, God. You save them, God. Fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Because God will fight your battles, even on your job. Some of them doing witchcraft against you on your job. Your supervisor. God can make you the boss. <laughs> that same supervisor coming against you. God may make you the supervisor. See, he'll promote you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Many times when you're being fought by leaders... The devil can see your destiny when you don't see it. But the devil cannot stop your destiny. What God has for you is for you. When God says, I'm going to bless you, he's going to bless you. The devil cannot stop that blessing that God has for you, no matter how much he tries. There's no witchcraft that can stop your destiny. There's no witchcraft that can stop the blessings that God has in store for you. As long as you keep your eyes on the prize. As long as you keep your eyes on Jesus. Ah, don't look back, but look ahead. Ha. So I'm not going back to Egypt, but I'm going to the promised land. So I'm not going to die in the wilderness, but I'm going to get to the promised land. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes focused on God and watch how God will bless. Watch how God will see you through. Watch how God will fix your marriages. Watch how God will save you and your children. Ha. But make sure that when God bless you, say, Lord, I thank you. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I don't just wait to get the church to give God thanks. Ah, I can praise God here in the street. Ha. If folk can sell drugs in the street, if folk can kill, why can't we thank God in the street? You'd be surprised how God will work miracles in the street. That God can make cancer disappear out of somebody's body. That God can make arthritis disappear out of somebody's body where you have faith in the miracle worker. That God can save a drug addict and get him out the attic and make him a man of God. Woo! God can save a drug dealer when he call on the faith healer, Jesus Christ, and make him a man of God. Ha. God can save a prostitute ha, and make her a prophetess and make her a woman of God because you may have been sexually abused. You may have been molested. Jesus can heal your broken heart. Woo. Don't got to take no drug overdose. All you need is a Holy Ghost. Ha. I feel Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He'll give you joy that drugs cannot give you. He'll give you joy that crack cannot give you. That's called the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now you can have a Holy Ghost party. In a Holy Ghost party, you don't got to smoke no weed. God is all we need. Woo! I felt God right there. You don't need no crack and cocaine. Just get in God's domain. Once you get in God's domain, he'll set you free from crack and cocaine. Now you no longer will be insane. Now you can have a testimony and say, look where the Lord has brought you from. Hallelujah. Bless every person God in these houses. Bless every person God in this neighborhood. God, you love these people. And Lord, help us to love one another as Christ have loved you. Because Jesus is coming. He's coming again. He's coming soon. We must be born again of the water and of the spirit. Or we cannot enter to the kingdom of God. Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeshua HaMashiach. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. May God turn your tears into joy. We've been making do for the night. But joy will come in the morning time. In the name Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remissions of sins. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For this is the promise that God has for you and your children. Hallelujah. Acts chapter number 2, verse 38. You obey Acts 2, 38, you can make it to the pearly gates. <laughs> ah, don't play hate. Don't play hate. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And you can make it to the pearly gates. Praise the Lord. He'll put a smile on your face. He'll give you joy. He'll give you peace. He'll take away your sorrow. Even in the midst of sorrow, he'll give you peace for the day and tomorrow. Oh, I feel God in the place right now. When you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And believe in your heart that he was crucified. And God is raising from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For with the man, the heart believes unto righteousness. And confessing is made into salvation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's how much he loves you. Now God can embrace you with his love. Can nobody love you like Jesus? Now God can teach you how to love yourself. God bless her, Lord. Protect her every way she go. Lord, you love her and bless that family over there too, God. You can save these people and give them the power of the Holy Ghost. God got a great plan for your life. You can have a conversation with God wherever you at. You can have a conversation with Jesus and say, Lord, come into my heart and save me. Fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Jesus can forgive you for your sins. The only sin that God would not forgive is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Every other sin, Jesus can forgive you for your sins. Jesus can wash away your sins with his precious blood that he shed on the cross of Calvary. God can use you to make a difference in the world. God can use an ordinary little child. God called the young because they're strong. And he called the old because they know the way. God loves you today. And God got a great plan for your life. Something good is going to happen to you because Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way. Come on, tell us on YouTube land. Something good is going to happen to you because Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way. Reach out and grab him like the woman who had the issue of blood for 12 long years. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I will be made whole. And she was healed because of the power and the miracle working power, the awesome power of Jesus Christ. God bless you. All the YouTube land is watching me all around the world, in Africa, Haiti, Jamaica, New York City, all 50 states who's watching me here on YouTube. May the presence of the Lord be with you, even here in the neighborhood. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Jesus. May God, with somebody got cancer. We're going to pray against cancer right now in the name of Jesus. God, make cancer disappear out that body. Go in the name of Jesus. Lord, you didn't heal the other woman yesterday. She was paralyzed in her legs and you healed her on the spot. You done fixed the other broken marriages in one day. Work a miracle for somebody. Somebody been sick unto death. Tell death to go back to hell. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And though he was dead, ha, yet shall he live. And he that believeth in me shall never die. I believe God is working miracles for somebody right now. I believe God is turning somebody's tears into joy. Somebody been suicidal. Somebody been on drugs. Let the Lord give you a hug. When the Lord give you a hug, you no longer need drugs. God's love can deliver you from drugs and crack and cocaine when you're getting God's domain. And when you're getting God's domain, he'll set you free from crack and cocaine. And now you no longer will be insane. Now you can have a testimony and say, Jesus has set me free. I'm so glad he can set you free. I'm so glad Jesus can set you free. I'm so glad he can sex her free, singing glory, hallelujah. He can sex her free. And what I love about Jesus, he'll give you power to stay free. And who the son set free, he's free indeed. God bless you. I believe in the miraculous power of God. I believe God can raise the dead. I believe he can heal your blind eyes. I believe God can get you out that wheelchair. And most of all, he can save your soul from a burning hell. So you can have a tone, have a tone life to be with Jesus Christ. As I bring this thing to a close, the presence of the Lord is here. God is in the atmosphere. Praise the Lord for the Prince of Peace. Touch the little children and the fathers and the mothers suffer little children to come to Jesus. Forbid them not for such is the kingdom of heaven. God can use a little child. The Bible says the child shall leave them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When you humble yourself like a little child, Jesus said that the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. See, that's humility. That's being humble. All right. God bless you in YouTube land. We thank God for the souls who came to Jesus here in the neighborhood. Woman was praising God right here in this house. She said, keep preaching. Let the Lord use you. We had a, a good service here yesterday. A woman got healed right here in the street. She came with her legs paralyzed. We prayed. And Jesus healed the woman right here on this corner. I didn't do it. God did it. <laughs> I don't take no credit. All the glory goes to God. He's a miracle worker. I don't want nobody worshiping me. Pray for me. Encourage me. But don't worship me. I am not God. Even though the Bible says you are gods, but we are not the immortal God. 
God is a God above all gods. I got to stay humble and give God all the glory and not take no credit. All the credit goes to Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for your holy angels that's in the midst today who you've been using throughout the ages and centuries of time. We give you the glory, God, for you sit on the throne, for you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and the first and the last. Wash away our sins, purge us, purge our minds, purge our hearts, create in us a clean heart, and renew the right spirit within us. For promotion comes from God. Anyone who wants to send to our cash app is Flame of Fire 8. I'm the Pastor Warren Adams. W-A-R-R-E-N-A-D-A-M-S. God bless you. We thank you, Lord, for restoring that marriage. God did it in one day after they were separated for a long time. After I prayed on the phone along with my prayer warriors, handmaiden, and Diane Shepherd, or the prayer warriors, God answered prayer the same day. He is a prayer answering God. And make sure, let's not forget about Jesus. Hallelujah. And say to God be the glory. Praise the Lord. That when the praises go up, the blessings will come down. And he'll give you joy and peace and happiness. Because that's how much God loves you. And God loves our young people. May God's angels watch over you two young ladies. God bless your children. God is with y'all. You're welcome. God going to bless them in school and everywhere they go and bless their parents. God got a great plan for these young people's lives. God is raising up young people. Bless the older people. Bless the middle-aged people. Those who are sick and the fit in their body. Heal somebody's sick body today. Heal somebody from a stroke. Heal somebody, God, from heart trouble. Heal somebody from pain and tumors. Make tumors disappear and work a miracle, God, for the people. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The love of Jesus is in the atmosphere. In the Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We'll see you again. God bless you. God bless you to God. Be the glory. Hallelujah. Oh, what a, what a word from the Lord today.